Hello everyone, my name is Max Harich and I'm Munich's ambassador of the Republic of Uzupis and I'm trying to tell you what the Republic of Uzupis is as far as I understood it myself. So let's start with the hard facts. Uzupis is a self-declared independent artist republic located in the UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site of Vilnius Old Town in Lithuania. It was established in 1997, it's around 0.7 square kilometers big or small and 7,000 citizens live there, of, out of which approximately 1,000 are artists of all kinds like sculptors, painters, musicians and so on. We have our own government, we have our own code of arms, own constitution and so on. And the question is, why? Why did we do this? What is this republic for? Is this just kind of joke? Are we going trying to attract tourists? Yeah, we are attracting tourists, but why did this all start? So let's take a look back into the history. This is how it looked after the breakdown of Soviet Union. The district was totally dominated by poverty and violence. The main road was simply called the Street of Death and it was not called like this for fun. And uh, as you all know, this is like everywhere in the world, this is the, uh, the area which artists can afford, so artists settled there, but still they were really suffering from these uh, things around them, and so a small group of artists decided to act. And it all started with a foolish dream. This is our president, Romos Lelekis, who had this dream of being the president of his own republic, and he woke up and told his friends, I, I had this dream that I was the president of this republic and we can all change things here. We can we can all bring the people we can all bring all the people together again and make Ujupis a place for everyone. This was his dream. So a few weeks after this dream they really called out the Republic of Ujupis on the first of April of nineteen ninety seven and uh, they tried to initiate and manifest a new community spirit with this. They designed their own coat of arms with a greeting hand as a sign for friendliness and openness to the whole world. They publicly displayed their own constitution based on self-responsibility, humor and paradox. The constitution is the intellectual centerpiece of Ujupis Republic with peculiar articles like Everyone has the right to live by the river Vanille, and the river Vanille has the right to flow by everyone. So it also gives rights to the nature. Uh, as you see here, everyone has the right to love and take care of the cat is an article. And this was actually taken during the run of the national parades on the 1st of April, I think it was 2017. And most important, no one has the right to violence. Uh, I think in the beginning we even had an army of about 12 or 13 men, but they were quickly abandoned because they were not allowed to fight against anyone. But most importantly, this artist group started organizing events for all citizens and creating small moments of happiness here and there. They really love to do parades and there are enough things you can celebrate in this world. Some make sense, some don't, uh, who cares, I mean you can celebrate the giant mouse trap. You can celebrate uh, the what is this? A giant clothes pack? I don't know actually. Well, I don't speak Lithuanian. They explained it to me, but I didn't get it. And more and more citizens joined their events, and the community spirit grew stronger. So what happened since then? Um, I can tell you some miracles happened. What was called the Street of Death before was reconquered by Lovath and uh, you see this at this night this this is actually in the beginning of the street that I showed you before and a whole Ujupis turned turned into an open air gallery with street art everywhere and many artists just expressing their freedom and creativity and people from all over the world came to join the parades on National Day. I think this was, uh, don't let me lie, I think this was le uh, last year, 2019. Oh, I'm there in the middle. And you can see all the flags and there were about 200 people celebrating there 
for the National Day on 1st of April, which is no coincidence that it's on the 1st of April. And they started translating their constitution, which are these uh, reflective plaques made out of solid steel, so that whenever you look into the constitution, you look into yourself. They started translating it into all languages of the world. And I think so far that we have about 37 to 38. This is an older picture. And they they even invited state leaders to join their unveiling ceremonies because this is really became a big thing. Here in those pictures, you can see the presidents of uh, uh, of Ujupis on the left, Romos Velekes, the former president of uh, Lithuania, and the former president of Estonia. And uh, many people, many nice people, came to visit Ujupis. And some people even came to bless our wonderful constitution. Maybe you know this guy. And today we have more than 500 ambassadors worldwide with the task to build bridges between people. And my Munich embassy builds bridges between the worlds of arts and technology. Because Arts can make technology more accessible to, to the society, thereby making it more ethical and even more innovative. What are we doing at, with this embassy here in Munich? So we, we try to make technology look simple and funny, so people enjoy playing around with it. Everybody in, in this arts, tech, science scene is trying to make tech so high-end and sophisticated. But I, I think people are getting shy in front of this. So if, if you... If you just put a dirty box on the ground, nobody will really care whether there are some Arduinos and sensors hidden in there. They will just play around with it and have, have fun with it. And that's what technology should be about. And just to be like more credible in the tech scene, we uh, recruited a very competent consul, Consul Roboy, as the world's first artificially intelligent diplomat. And also as a friend that we really like to hang out with. Um, just to show Roboy that we mean it serious to make friends with him, we even added an article to our constitution about artificial intelligence, which is, as far as I know, the first time ever artificial intelligence is mentioned in a state's constitution. And this article has the task to just remind us of our own responsibility. It says, any artificial intelligence has the right to believe in the goodwill of humanity, which is a kind of subversion of the ethical debate right now, where we all try to put the ethics in the code and just hope for that AI to be nice to humans. No, in the end, it's the humans that decide. There's always the human factor behind the programming, behind the data, behind the labeling. So it's us who will always be responsible for that. And based on this, we formulated our own ethical principles for AI design. And we started publishing these and uh, contributing these on various occasions to the international debate on ethical AI. But most importantly, we organize events for the Munich community where we bring people together, people of all kinds, people that are interested in art, that are interested in technology, that are interested in robots, that are interested in cherry brandy, whatever. As long as people start talking to each other, I think the, the world will be fine. And we also organize discussions between artists and technologists. And sometimes we do piano concerts, concerts with music that is composed uh, by an artificial intelligence, by our Minister for Sound, Innovation and Technology, Gleb Divov. And we just invite people to contribute to our idea of Ujipis in any way they like. I mean, here there was this very nice graffiti artist, and I think it's just beautiful what he did for us. In the end, I mean, it was not our building, but I like it. So, and whenever people are interested, we also offer them the Ujipis citizenship. And which, I mean, if, if people are interested to become Ujipians, right from that moment they already are Ujupins, just just like our president became the president of Ujupis. And 
we we still do this if if people ask us can we become citizens we we can give them an official certificate but actually you don't need this you can even design your own passport because uh, we don't really have official passports every person is unique so people deserve a unique passport and sometimes we even went to the uh, uh, we even installed the embassy in Muhammad Ali's former boxing gym in uh, New York City because I mean you have to go where the people are and we try to create spaces of fun and inclusion where, where everybody can feel uh, home and just have some fun and just and and try to get a little bit of that Ujipu spirit and I think sometimes you can see that, that even with animals this works this was just the very same room and you see this little dog on the fur which refused to leave the Republic uh, I mean the embassy and the physical meetings are not possible like sometimes during corona lockdown measures we invite our community to the virtual world I mean, it's it's 2020 you have to stay up to date so here we are in a Mozilla hubs with our cats and some nice flowers and so on uh, but still we take our diplomatic duties very serious here you see us with the um, Lithuanian honorary consul and the Lithuanian ambassador and Lithuanian cultural attaché that came from Berlin to a nice event and we helped the Ujupis family grow by uh, recruiting very impactful honorary citizens like Birgit Fula who did a very very impactful job for uh, uh, Ujo Pis, she was responsible for uh, creating the first German uh, translation of the Ujo Pis, uh constitution. And we also are very proud to have uh, recruited some very energetic new ambassadors like Dr. Nelly Benayoun, um, a very, very famous designer and amazing director of the uh, University of the Underground which I'm a proud al alumni of and just can really ac uh, recommend to visit these, uh, her events and attend her educational programs. And we are always looking for new corporations and like this, what is this? I mean, this is, this is uh, the Panchagatu project, a theater project from Stuttgart with a, <laughs> it's a, you might think it's a rat, it's a mouse. No, of course it's a death man, which is some kind of, swimming mole and this one is I think 16 meters long and it's really hungry for gold but uh, this is another story and you know Ujupis is not fixed Ujupis is always in flow like the river Vanilla around it it's open it's flowing and foremost it's paradox I think and this this is one of the key elements of Ujupis it, it does not try to divide the world in you are wrong, you are right, and uh, this is true, this is false. You never know if somebody is lying. You, you never know what is true or not. Sometimes it takes centuries to find out, so we don't believe in truth or lies. I think everything is possible, and this is very, very, very crucial point that uh, really grabbed my mind. So what's next? What, what is the next thing we're planning? We're just launching the... Institute for Applied Paradox for mind games and seeing exercises to explore the unthinkable because we want to study this principle of paradox and learn about it and be able to teach it and first of all fully grasp its potential which is totally underestimated in, in our times that are so dominated by logic and reason and what will this Institute do. I mean, the, its ta task is bringing together arts and culture and tech and science, and combining it with the, and, and giving civil society access to this. Because uh, civil society needs to be enabled to raise new questions. We're in a time where crazy things are happening, and the old answers don't seem to help anymore. So we need to raise new questions like. What if we purposefully trained algorithms wrong to counter discrimination? Would that work? How, how could that be? How would this change the world? And we also try to uh, uh, question the core beliefs of, of technocratic governments so far, like Henry Ford's idea of what uh, that 
Maybe you know his quote, if I had asked the people what they wanted, they would have asked for faster horses. So we ask ourselves, what if you had just done this? What if you had listened to the people and had invested in faster horses instead of cars that just pollute the air and fill the cities as, and, and kill people that just try to go visit their neighbor? And why are we doing this? Why are we investing in paradoxy? Because it's important to see what is invisible to others. And this picture is one of my favorites because if you see this, and uh, this probably reminds you of a lot of discussions going on today where some people see things from one direction and some from the other and both of them are so sure that only they know what is right and it's totally impossible to, for them to see what others can see. And we're trying to just to create some exercises that help you uh, get new perspectives. And basically, this is all I wanted to tell you. And so thank you very much for your attention. And just to end with my, one of my favorite Ujupis paradoxes, Ujupis is so small, there is room for all. Bye bye. <laughs>